Hey, what is going on guys? Mom's with Promising. Welcome back to a brand new video. Now, what for you guys today is another manga review, and the series that we're going to be reviewing today is none other than Sanctuary. Now, if you guys are familiar with some of my manga collecting tendencies, then you'll know that sometimes I get absolutely infatuated and addicted with just collecting a random rare out of print series, such as Gantz and Battle Royale in the past. And the most recent example of that is this series right here, Sanctuary. Now, I picked up all nine volumes in English of this series for uh, more than I'd like to admit, but I really wanted to see what the series was all about after seeing lots of really great reviews on the series. But with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and get right into the Sanctuary manga review. So if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. Without further ado, let's get right into the manga review. So first, I'm going to give a brief plot synopsis of Sanctuary. And basically, this manga follows two very close friends, Hojo and Asami. Hojo is the leader of the Sagara Alliance, which is a Yakuza organization, and Asami is an assaring politician trying to work his way into the diet. So when they were younger, Hojo and Asami were actually both caught up in the Cambodian genocide, which is a genocide of Cambodians that happened in the 70s, I believe from 75 to 1979. And obviously as they had to live through this massacre, they went to basically hell and back as they escaped the Cambodian massacre with some other youth. It was a very hard journey, but they made it to the border. And when they finally got back to Japan, they were very disappointed in how they saw the Japanese people. They saw that the younger generation of Japanese people were very lethargic and unmotivated, and all of the politicians who have all the power and basically control the entire country were really old and corrupt, and they wanted to see some change in the country. So basically, Hojo and Asami played rock, paper, scissors, decide which one of them would take over the underground scene, and which one would go above ground, being the politician. And their plan was that they would secretly work together from different ends of the spectrum to basically create this new sanctuary of Japan. So that's the basic rundown of the plot, and I'm gonna get into the reasons why I really enjoyed this story. So first off, as you expect, obviously following a gang leader and a politician, there's a good mix of Yakuza activities and politics in this manga. And I gotta say, there was not a single time where I thought that one of the two halves was overbearing on the other, like there's too much politics or too much Yakuza activity. The mangaka was able to create a very balanced blend of the two and sometimes actually thought the politics were sometimes even more engaging than the gang stuff at certain points, but again, it was a very good blend and I'm really satisfied with how the two come together. The story is also very well paced again, it doesn't really dwell on one of the two sides for way too long where it become boring by any means. And on both sides of the spectrum, there's always something interesting and exciting happening, whether it be the politics or the gang activities, you know, there's always something to look forward to that constantly keeps you wondering what's going to happen next. The politics in the series are somewhat complex with the different factions and all the coalitions in the Japanese government. I'm not 100% sure on how it all works, but the manga made it pretty interesting and easy for me to understand. And also, the different diet members are all given distinct personalities, which makes them interesting and the overall politics aspect a lot more engaging. And as for the Yakuza side of things, there are a lot of really good suspenseful moments and surprises as you know, certain gang leaders get shot and attacked. And there's lots of conflict and interesting developments between the different alliances in the Yakuza. And it's just really interesting. And overall, I think that the storytelling is done extremely well for both the Yakuza and the politician side of things. Now moving on to characters, this is probably the section where I had the most difficulty deciding you know, where I really stand on the series. Now in this manga I found that there's some really really good characters, but the two main characters, Hojo and Asami, I just felt like there was something missing from them, but I can't tell if that was by design or if it's just a flaw in the manga writing and artwork. So I'll start off by talking about that, Hojo and Asami. Basically, like I said, they went through this whole Cambodia massacre. So it goes without saying that they're pretty hardened, you know, they've seen some shit. But when I'm reading this, it just feels like they're a little bit stone-faced and don't really show that much emotion or expression. Both of the characters are calm, cool, collected geniuses in their own rights. But outside of that, they really don't show any other qualities. And also the way that the characters are drawn, unless something like really shocking happens, you never really see a change in their expression. And they actually do mention this in the story, but if you swap the two characters' places, if Hojo was the politician and a Asami was the Yakuza boss, it really wouldn't make this series any different. So again, I'm not sure if this is intentional or if it's just a little bit of a lapse in the writing and art, but I'm just gonna kind of chalk it up to, I'm a little bit disappointed in the characters, the main characters that is, but as for the supporting characters, there are a lot of amazing ones. My favorite character in the entire series would probably have to be Mr. Tokai. Now he's on the Yakuza side of things. I believe he was Hojo's mentor basically, until Hojo basically surpassed him and became the Don of the Sagra Alliance. Tokai is basically everything you expect from a gung-ho Yakuza member. I mean, he acknowledges his own stupidity and a lack of wit, and he basically faces all of his conflicts with violence, which is just super fun to watch in this manga. And there's also the Secretary General, which is kind of the main antagonist of this series, as he holds basically all the power in the Japanese diet. 
behind it. And he's basically played up to be this really corrupt, old, mean-hearted politician who pulls a lot of strings, does illegal stuff, and basically does everything he can to stop Asami's run in the diet. But his characters like these, I think, make the story really come to life. And these are by no means minor side characters. I mean, these are basically as much a main character as Hojo and Asami are, and they really do compensate for the, I guess, lack of emotion and expression that I felt with those two main characters. So yeah, in the character department, I'm a little bit split on the two main characters, but other than that, the characters are fantastic, they're all very well written, and keep the story constantly interesting. And lastly, I want to talk about the artwork in this manga. Now, the artwork in this series is absolutely timeless. I mean, just the way it's done has that vintage 90s feel. It's just so great, and it really complements a lot of the strengths of the series. Now, when you think of the Japanese Yakuza, two things come to mind, fancy cars, and guns. The cars and the guns in the series are drawn so realistically, by far the most realistic guns and cars I've seen in any manga period. And of course there's a lot of badass shootouts in this manga, and not only are those drawn well, but the guns in particular are super clean and just make the scenes a lot more enjoyable. The faces of the characters are also drawn extremely well, and there's a lot of variety in the shading that's used. Sometimes it's just kind of like a line and it's kind of colored in, other times it has like this charcoal look to it. You know, it's really gritty and exaggerated, and those are just a few instances of the different kinds of shading that are done for the characters' faces. They're all very detailed, especially the big bad antagonist of the series who has a lot of wrinkles and, and his face is drawn really grotesque and shown right up close in your face just to kind of play him up as this gross antagonist. Another thing that I forgot to mention about this manga is that there is a lot of sex and the sex is drawn actually pretty well. You know, it's not too graphic. It's censored out, but it does look very vintage, very 90s, and overall I think they fit very nicely into the story. So yeah, needless to say, this artwork is absolutely timeless, some of the best I've ever seen in manga, and if you're a fan of amazing artwork, even if you don't want to read the series, definitely check out the artwork, you'll find some amazing panels online. And yeah, the artwork is definitely one of the highlights of this series. So overall, what is my final verdict on Sanctuary? I'm gonna have to give this series a very strong 8 to a light 9, I'm pulling a little bit of a Fantano here, but that's how I feel right now for my rating. As a fan of Yakuza and politics in this manga, this series was super engaging. I mean, I just could not stop reading this series. It's only nine volumes, but I absolutely blew right through it. The artwork is absolutely insane, and without a doubt will go down as one of my favorites that I've read in all of manga. The only thing that's holding this series back a little bit is, again, the main characters. I'm not sure if it was intentional, but even if it was, it kind of takes away a little bit from the experience of the manga, but these characters are compensated for by a pretty large cast of other amazing characters, so that kind of fills in the gap that the two main characters left in my soul. But with all that being said, I would highly, highly recommend you go out and check out Sanctuary. Again, if you are of the mature audience, you can handle things like, you know, gang activities, violence again, some of these sexual things I talked about. And if you're a fan of politics in manga, then that's just a little added bonus on top. It's done absolutely spectacularly in this manga, and I have no doubt that if you're into those things, then you will enjoy this series. Anyways, guys, that's my manga review for Sanctuary. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. So yeah, this has been the Prom G. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and as always, hope to catch you in the next one.